I get the same uh, same message. I'll see if I can find something uh, in uh, in the instructions. I don't find any instructions on uh, the screen sharing, um, but maybe our host uh, locally present can enable that. And the slides have been shared and uh, the host will be able to upload them where needed and right in the room I'll be able to control the 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 slides. So in case you want me to go to the next slide, I'll be able to proceed with that. I just a click of a button. So I think that is already taken care of. Me your audio is too uh, uh it's not loud enough. The same for me. So we couldn't hear what you were saying. Sorry. Were you allowed to moderate our slides? Or, or yeah. Okay.
welcome good morning uh, it's a chilly morning this uh, in Addis Ababa and uh, I welcome you all to this session of uh, promoting the modern internet standards and uh, and it is a pleasure that with support from the GFCE the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climatic Policy of the Netherlands uh, we are able to successfully be here and to present to you uh, this session of uh, promoting Indian standards to increase safety and secure security. Um, uh, just right at the table, we have uh, I have Wout, who is going to be our rapporteur. We have Martin Butterman, who is the advisor and the coordinator of the Triple I project, and we have Alisa from uh, the Ministry of Economic Affairs. And our speakers, uh, we have uh, Gabin Klein from the Dutch Internet Standards, who will be joining us remotely. But Hojin, who will also be coming in from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Uh, we have Flavio, who is with us here, but uh, on his behalf, we shall be having Gilberto Zorello, who will be making a presentation, all this remotely. And we have uh, Johnny Nodwick, who is from uh, the, who is the host master uh, from DK. And, uh, and I'll be doing the online, uh, I have also a colleague of mine who is doing online moderation, who is, that is who's Gabin, whom I've already mentioned about. Uh, my name is Daniel Nangaka, and at least I'm happy to be here. Uh, the overall agenda we shall be having at least uh, a number of uh, discussion on how we can best promote internet standards. Uh, this is an initiative that came in under work, under the working group uh, E of uh, the GFCE, which is mainly on the cyber security uh, internet standards. Uh, right with me here, I'm going to give the floor to Alisa, who will give a brief remark. And then uh, we shall get into here from Gaben, and then we shall go through the presentations. And as we shall be winding up, we shall be able to hear from Martin to sp give a brief on the Triple I project. Quickly, let me give the floor to Alisa. Well, good morning, everyone, um, and uh, thank you for uh, for having us here. Um, I uh, well, fr I'm from the the Dutch government, and um, we. Uh, um, we've been working, um, or we, we already have for quite a few years, I believe since 2015, so that was way before I started working for the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Um, we have this great website, internet.nl, um, and it's, um, it's a collaboration, or the, the website was created after a collaboration between the Ministry of Economic Affairs um, and the Dutch uh, community, um, working on uh, internet standards and safety um, and thinking together that we should organize something to, to make people more aware of the internet standards that are used behind a website or used behind a domain name, I should say. Um, and now it's also for quite some time being um, that you can also check an email address. And I'm sure many others um, uh, or th that um, Gerben will say a bit more about it, but I'm I'm really really pleased that we can show this example and that um, already a few other countries have also more or less copied the example um, thanks to the fact that it's open source software so or open source code everybody can use it and I think it's really really important to stress that um, that we um, together can well hopefully build or create a safer internet um, and yeah I'm looking forward to this session and please if you have any questions um, just raise your hand don't wait till the end um, because I think it's important that we have this interaction with each other we're here we can see each other or I can see the people at least in the room and um, for the on-site moderators please please ensure that that we have a, a an most interactive uh, session as possible because I think that that will be the most useful for everyone. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Alisa, for those remarks. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to ask uh, the host to uh, help us to enable uh, the presentations as uh, they will be needed. Um, very quickly, uh, let me give uh, the opportunity to my colleague, Gavin, please. Uh, Thank you, uh, Danielle, for uh, hosting um, this meeting on site. 
Um, what I will try to do is uh, share my screen uh, with all of you and um, hopefully you will be able to see some of the um, things that Alisa already mentioned um, dealing with the Dutch uh, internet.nl initiative. Um, we started, is the screen visible to everyone? Daniel? Yes, the screen is visible. Thank it you. is, Kevin. Thank you, thank you. Well, um, a, a short agenda for uh, about 10, 15 minutes of introduction on uh, internet.nl. We have developed this since 2014 because we all agreed in the Netherlands, uh, both from government and the private sector, that modern internet standards um, are necessary to keep the internet safe and secure. Um, and what you will see is that uh, it's a set of standards that we are dealing with that is really deep into, let's say, the internet infrastructure. So it enables us to uh, visit domains, uh, the, the websites, uh, the internet, and to communicate through email in a safe and secure way. Uh, IPv6 is uh, mainly meant to uh, be able to connect as many people as we can because IPv4 has reached its, uh, its end, you could say. Uh, we need to be secure, so the domain signing uh, should have been uh, perhaps secure from the beginning. DNSSEC now is the answer to deal with that. And the same goes for the other standards that you can see on the screen. What we wanted to do is promote these standards in such a way that people could understand why they are relevant to us in a modern society. And because we know that these open standards will enable us to keep the internet uh, working. Um, it is not just about security. And therefore, I would like uh, to take a look at IPv6. And on this map, you will see the enormous difference in take up uh, that is, is quite low in many, many countries. Uh, we see great exceptions in green, but only a few. Um, many countries in deep red where IPv6 is not, uh, the capable rate is not up to standards at all. And this is just an example. We could give other examples as well. Uh, thanks to EPNIC for uh, sharing this map. If we look at the um, private and public partners within our internet standards platform, because it's not just a website that we will come back to uh, uh, in a few minutes, it is also about the community. And the community in the Netherlands is really a public-private partnership between Dutch government, uh, for example, uh, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, but also the National Cybersecurity Center and others from Dutch government as well as uh, private organizations, but all of them without a specific commercial interest. They are there because they believe in the internet as a, as a basic given to all of us. For example, SIDN, SURF, NLNet, RIPE, and ECP are supporting partners of um, uh, the Dutch uh, internet standards platform. And I have the honor of uh, being the chair of that platform and that really is a privilege because these people are working closely together to uh, keep up with modern, open, modern internet standards. Um, and I suggest that, that if other countries would like to follow uh, this type of initiative, do not only focus on the test tools at internet.nl, but also think about this public-private partnership between different organizations in your country. What we built to make it visible to a broader audience was the website internet.nl. And you see the interface of the current website. And uh, later on, I suggest that you will uh, try to look up your own domain or your own email at internet.nl in a few minutes. But this is the basic interface where you can test your website, test your email, and test your local connection. And you will get the results, and you will see that in a few minutes. Uh, in such a way that you can easily see what standards are up to par and where you might have to change or update issues. It's not only the test 
part of this website that makes it interesting, but we also have a Hall of Fame, not only for individuals who want to show that their website or email is scoring 100%, but also for hosting providers that can show that they have done their best to score 100% for their customers. Um, the internet.nl website is not just in Dutch, it's also in English, as you can see, and we know, and you will hear that in a few minutes from other countries, that the take-up is uh, growing and other languages will be available or are available already in other countries. We also developed an API and a dashboard where we can do bulk tests. This is not uh, available to the general public, but if you are a public organization working in the internet domain within the Netherlands, then you can get access to the dashboards and you can test up to 5,000 domains at once and get really nice reports even over time to see how things may have changed. Um, it's, it's an easy tool uh, used by um, 70 plus uh, users at the moment with hundreds of thousands of tests every year. And now for the demo. And of course, we could try to give a demo uh, with our online participation. But I think the best way to, to get connected to internet.nl is take a look uh, for yourself. And if you use this link, you will go to the English version immediately and can check both your own domain or a government domain in your country, uh, your own email, and even the local uh, connection at the IGF uh, right now. Um, so I'll take a brief moment and hope that many of you will take a look. And if there are any comments on the results you uh, get, don't hesitate uh, to raise a question. And then something about everything that is behind internet.nl. I don't, I'm, I'm looking at the audience. Are there any questions, any people who have scored 100%? If you could raise your hand, that would be interesting to see. If not, I will move on. Um, we could not have developed internet.nl without um, uh, reusing existing testing tools and source code. So there are um, things that we want to share openly because we made it available ourselves. And then our content is under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Um, and the source code of the whole internet.nl and, and even the tooling behind is under an Apache uh, license version 2. But the building blocks, and you see them underneath, um, are there because there is a great open source community. And we have um, uh, tried to contribute uh, to some of these building blocks ourselves uh, from the Netherlands, from participating uh, organizations. But other uh, tooling and building blocks are available online for all of you to, uh, to make use of. And you will find uh, our uh, internet.nl software uh, the code at GitHub. If we look at um, um, what you have seen so far, this is just a Dutch initiative. It's, um, it's done uh, over the last eight years by a group of very interested uh, uh, colleagues who wanted to make sure that we strive to an open, free and secure uh, internet for all of us, not just in the Netherlands. And therefore, we are really happy that some other countries took up um, the same idea and have worked uh, together with us or even completely on their own on um, similar initiatives, similar websites. So what I uh, would like to do is give the floor now to um, uh, Bart Hogeveen from Australia, uh, who have developed um, a, a web check tool themselves. And I will end my presentation um, right here. Uh, thank you, Gabin. Just before you proceed, uh, we ju sure. I just uh, ran a check on the connection that is here at the AGF. Uh, just uh, for the information, is that uh, the connection test just achieved ten percent of uh, the standards? Uh, it has uh, it ha it the modern addresses 
that are meant to be reachable of IPv6, they are not so much reachable. But one advantage is that uh, the IPv6 connectivity of the DNS resolver is running very well. It has a green check mark. And uh, the IPv4 connection via DNS are perfectly running well. And, but all the others are not uh, perfectly running well. So this is just an example of how you can be able to test your connections, whether they are conforming to these uh, standards uh, right uh, in your different locations. Uh, let's continue with the presentation uh, to my next colleague. Thank you. Is that is that me? Yes. That's you, Bart. Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks. If um, if the the host could uh, enable uh, video and or share screen, that would be great. And while that's happening, let me let me give you a, a short introduction. So uh, I am speaking to you from uh, Canberra, Australia. Good morning to you. Good evening here. Um, thanks very much to um, to the IGF, to the host, and uh, to the team organizing this event for yeah, allowing uh, me to share some of our experience working uh, with uh, uh, the Internet.nl tool and um, and the collaboration with the, the Dutch Internet Standards uh, platform. Um, <clears throat> I am. Uh, I hope. I, I assume you can all see the screen. Um, um, I, I, I wanted to, um, yeah, uh, run you through, let's say, our experience in, in kind of replicating uh, to a great extent um, internet.nl in, screen, uh, but we can't in Australia. see you, your video, but we can see the presentation, but we can see your video. Yes, perfectly. Now I think you'll That's be better. Able to okay, be able great. To great to be also visibly with you. Um, so first question up front is is a dot au check that's how we called uh, our, um, our our project is that a simple copy and paste uh, because as, as uh, Gerben mentioned internet.nl is available in English um, English is the common language in Australia so why don't we just use the English version of internet.nl um, that's probably kind of the main thread of of, of my uh, short presentation uh, it is obviously not a simple uh, um, copy paste Um, just to give you a bit of context, let's say about the cybersecurity context in uh, in Australia. This is uh, a, a sheet from the um, Australian Cybersecurity Centre, which they published in their uh, their previous annual cybersecurity report, um, where they looked at uh, the different cybersecurity incidents. And I think what's telling from this matrix is that uh, most of the incidents that are, that are being reported to our national cybersecurity centre uh, are. Uh, what they call low-level malicious attacks, so looking at targeted recon reconnaissance, phishing, and a non-sensitive data loss, predominantly affecting um, small organizations and medium-sized organizations um, and uh, state government and academia. And state government for us is kind of the, the sub-national government entities. <clears throat> so building on that, we kind of took a few kind of concepts into practice. There's obviously kind of the, uh, the, the UN General Assembly resolutions dating back to 2003, which is calling on the creation of a global culture of cybersecurity. Um, and I think this all fits kind of into that broader, broader agenda. Um, but uh, but we, we were not only kind of looking at what was happening in kind of uh, in the internet.nl context or in the UN context. Uh, we, for instance, also looked at, at what was happening kind of across the channel in, in the UK, um, where the UK National Cybersecurity Center kind of had this approach of, of trying to do simple things at scale uh, which can then have a positive and measurable effect. And I think one of the things that we're talking about here is doing simple, straightforward, relatively simple and relatively straightforward things um, at scale, and that will have a massive impact uh, on cyber kind of uh, uh, the uptake of standards and then by consequence, uh, cyber security and cyber resilience across our economy. Um, in the specific context of Australia, in the 2020 cybersecurity strategy, um, not only is there an ambition for um, the online space to be a safe space for all Australians, but also for businesses really to take their own responsibility for making sure that their products and services are secure. Uh, in other words, that's not seen as a government responsibility, but as a as a uh, individual and private responsibility. <clears throat> so when we started our initiative, and this is uh, this goes back uh, already four years, four or five years now, is that we would kind of replicate the the internet.nl ecosystem. So not just the tool. 
but also kind of establish some kind of a, of a multi-stakeholder platform and also be involved in kind of activities around education and assistance that like spe speaking to audiences like the IGF uh, as well as other platforms and, and conferences and sessions uh, here in Australia. Well, as you can judge by the, um, <clears throat> by the traffic lights, um, even though uh, developing and launching the tool took us uh, nearly four years, um, that's the only thing that, uh, uh, that, that got, let's say, got through at the moment, kind of the building the ecosystem around it with those uh, multiple stakeholders and kind of uh, building that community is a, has been a much harder sell uh, here in Australia. Um, and just kind of give you a comparison, uh, the previous speaker kind of listed the, uh, the actors that are kind of key partners of the, uh, the, inter the, the Dutch um, Internet Standards platform. Um, and uh, on the left hand side, I, I was kind of listing um, their Australian equivalents. Um, but only two of them really kind of, uh, were, we were only kind of be, be able to kind of really engage two of those. One is the .au domain administrator, Auda. Um, as well as the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman, which is kind of the the, the community of the, the representative of um, of the community of small businesses here in Australia, <laughs> um, and that's one of the reasons why I think that's important to flag is that in our consultations that we've held with industry groups across the country is that there is a real need to kind of help um, and help and assist um, the small and medium enterprises, those companies, those smaller companies that don't have kind of a, a cybersecurity team on site um, that are relying on their service providers to just provide them with a hosting service, a website, a mail service uh, that is allegedly up to standard. Um, so that's kind of where we are in a very different, I think, ecosystem um, than uh, Herben and the team have been able to create back in the Netherlands. Um, as we said, I mean, we are taking uh, exactly the same. Uh, so we've, we've replicated the source codes from Internet and L. Thank you so much uh, for making that available uh, a few years back. Um, but we had really the issue of kind of creating a sense that all those standards, which are internationally generally accepted and seen as good practices, are also kind of applicable uh, here in the Australian context. Um, so we really had to make an effort to make sure that we were not only referenced to um, kind of the internet.nl source materials or the uh, IETS source materials, but really link back to um, kind of Australian relevant materials. And for us, that's the information security manual uh, uh, that's being uh, produced and managed by the Australian Cybersecurity Center. Uh, and, uh, and all of the standards, or most of the standards, I should say, um, that are being tested uh, can be found in that manual, but not all of them. Um, and an inter interesting discussion we've been having for, for many, many years is, for instance, around DNSSEC, which is kind of in Europe and in the Netherlands, widely accepted. Here in Australia, there is a bit of kind of hesitance, if not kind of pushback against um, um, uh, the, the adoption of, uh, of that particular uh, standard um, by industry. Uh, and therefore, also, there is little kind of appetite, even within government, to kind of push that uh, across the economy. <clears throat> um, so as I mentioned, we, we've had a kind of a, a, a quite an extensive uh, period of, of debate and consultations um, with industry in the different kind of economic centers across the country um, and also with the Australian Cybersecurity Center. Um, um, so, so I think that, that that consultation and engagement component is, is really important, um, but that obviously also comes with kind of quite a time investment as well as a cost investment on both ends. Um, I mentioned the debate that we had about DNSSEC as, as kind of a, a valuable uh, and the kind of a necessary standard to check. And we had a whole discussion about the weightings. How much can you kind of, uh, can you weight and can you, can you, can you uh, kind of assess websites of small and medium businesses in our case? Uh, and, and kind of, can you judge them by the standards that we apply if there is no rock solid and a strong support um, that these standards are uh, kind of these standards to follow um, in the Australian case? Um, then there was also an issue that we've been facing all the time and where I think the cultural context in, in contrast to, for instance, the Netherlands is, is, is quite different, um, where there it's easier to kind of uh, name uh, websites and domains, uh, either as uh, saying we you reached X number of percent or you are in the Hall of Fame. Uh, that was kind of um, not, not really uh, accepted here. Uh, so we had to refrain from using percentage scores um, and we also decided not to include a Hall of Fame. Um, uh, people were just kind of afraid for reputations uh, on the good side or on the bad side. Um, 
So what we did is kind of, we put an, uh, if you compare, let's say, aucheck.com.au to internet.nl, we kind of put a layer in between, um, which contains lots of information, which is, I think, uh, understandable to a great extent for a non-technical audience. Um, and really try to kind of educate and kind of give low access uh, uh, understanding to, to what it is that we're trying to do and what it is that if I am a small business or a sole trader and I have a website, um, and I run my business uh, uh, by kind of a generic uh, email service provider, what is it that I need to know? What can I do myself? Um, and what are basic steps of protection that I can take and refer back to uh, uh, generally available tools? <clears throat> so this is kind of the, the user inter interface that, uh, that we have. Uh, as I said, we got rid of all the uh, kind of percentage scores, although you can still see uh, kind of where, you, where you're landing. Um, on the right-hand side, we also included a graph which kind of says uh, how you compare to the average, uh, the average scores of um, of, uh, of people taking the test, um, and we've included um, some things around things to check, um, and that links back to the additional subtests that Internet.nl is using. As I said, it's been quite a journey. So we started with the whole idea back in 2017, and we launched earlier this year. Uh, so we don't have kind of that much uh, user experience yet, um, but we hope to be able to kind of report on that um, um, in the course of, uh, of, of next year. Um, but it takes quite a time to kind of get the ecosystem ready and obviously get kind of the right parameters in place uh, to launch this. Um, this is our landing page, which, has, which obviously also looks uh, slightly different from, from the internet .nl interface. Um, just to show you this, uh, a couple of, uh, couple of last month, uh, I, uh, I, I ran a test kind of on a small sample of, um, of federal government um, domains on domains of uh, some key ASX 100, that's, that's kind of our, uh, our, our NASDAQ index, as well as of the, um, the internet service providers, the main internet service providers in Australia. And you see that the uptake of scores, as in um, which ones uh, get to a 100% a, a, a score is, uh, is pretty low. Um, that goes for... Uh, HTTPS all the way through to IPv6, um, uh, and I think only kind of in the mail domain, the uh, the anti-phishing uh, tools, the DMARC, DKIM, and um, and SPF is, is probably uh, what receives the, the bigger uptake. Um, so what do we hope next? Um, uh, hopefully, kind of to include the service offering for for small and medium enterprises. Um, also kind of leverage our partnership with AUDA, so the .au domain administrator, make sure that this, that kind of the test tool is part of their service package um, and really use the tool to kind of do a regular check on what I would call kind of the health of the .au domain uh, and potentially make sure that this potentially fits into uh, annual reporting by the Australian Cybersecurity Center. I'll leave it at that. I'm very happy to have any questions, comments or suggestions uh, now or, or later on. Thanks so much. Back to you. Thank you very much, but that was a great presentation. Um, since we're looking at uh, use cases, uh, we shall be monitoring the temperature of the questions as they come in. Um, since we have some kind of limitation in time, let me just give the opportunity to Gilberto, who will be presenting another use case from the NIC.PR. Gilberto Zorillo, you have the floor. Good morning. Let me share my, my presentation. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can okay. see the presentation. Good, Good. thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, thank you, uh, Internet Standard, for the opportunity to participate in this event. My name is Gilberto Zorello. I am a project manager from NICPR, the Brazilian Network Information Center that implements the decisions and projects designed by the Brazilian Internet Steering Committees, CG, i.pr, which is responsible for the coordination and integration of our internet services initiatives in, in the country. Uh, presentations about the implementation of top test uh, os padrões in Portuguese or test standards in English based on uh, internet.nl2. Uh, our, our agenda we're talking about the, the, the project, the difference between uh, Internet and L, obstacles, uh, statistics, and implementation impacts. 
was de developed by Nick Biar to disseminate the best uh, security practices in Brazil for websites, email, and user connection to internet. Uh, it, it uses the, the open source code provided by the Dutch implementation of Internet NL uh, with a web, web interface in Portuguese. Uh, the name is Top, that's the that's just Padrão in Portuguese, uh, and we, we start operation in December uh, the uh, 24th. Uh, 21st. The, the access is top.nic.br. Uh, due to a profile of Brazilian users who do not normally use the English language in his day-to-day -day life, it was necessary to translate the two uh, uh, to, to Portuguese. Uh, Django.po uh, format facilitates a lot the, the, the work. Uh, many links have been re redirected to documents in Portuguese, and links were created to contents and course uh, from nikki.br. Uh, a new visual identity was created uh, with a new name and logo and changed the, the user usability according to nikki.br website standards. Technically, uh, there, is, there are no relevant uh, differences. Another difference is uh, we uh, changed the Hall of uh, Fame to Kenya Top, uh, who is top in English. Uh, that sounds better in Portuguese and create a new picture for stamps. Uh, what were, uh, were the main obstacles for the project implementation? Uh, <clears throat> the, the main difficulty encountered was the gap between the, the available documentation and the in, in, inference that had to be made to deploy the tool. Uh, whenever uh, external uh, help was needed, we, we opened issues on GitHub and we've always been quickly and uh, kindly attended by the, the, the net standards team. Uh, although it, it's based on free and open source software too, the, the challenge was to, to make uh, ev everything work together as a solution. The implementation uh, is not very complicated, but our engineering team's experience with DNS projects has been crucial to implement it. Uh, uh, at first, we, we we were concerned about how the project would be maintained and updated from the point of view of bugs and security pa patches. But now we uh, we have uh, seen that internet standards are following a clear and suitable uh, roadmap for the two evolu evolution. The de development of the top. Uh, was carried out in collaboration with several NICBR internal areas, uh, like development systems, uh, search PR, communication legal. Uh, the top current version corresponds to Internet uh, NL 1.4. Uh, the implementation of RPKI and security.txt is planned for next year, the first half of next year. Some statistics about the, the utilization of the tool. Uh, the kernel tool was developed to, to monitor uh, the use of the top, uh, which accesses its data database directly and provides statistical data about the measurements carried out. Uh, some statistics from Brazil. The percentage of uh, IPv6 usage in Brazil is 38% information from uh, APNIC. Percentage of domains tested by, by top test site uh, with 100% uh, IPv6 is 24%. Uh, numbers of .pr domains, 5 million. We have a lot of in Brazil. 
uh, in, uh, numbers of .br uh, domains with DNSSEC configured, 1.5 million, 30%, about 30%. Percentage of domains that tested by top test sites with DNSSEC, 100%, is 20%. With some statistics of our, of our uh, uh, implementation, uh, up to now, we, we have just one year uh, running. Uh, we, we have uh, about 25,000 uh, uh, measurements uh, involving 10,000 uh, unique domains. Here, we, in K on top, we have 300, only uh, 300. And for I, IPv6, 100%, uh, DNS, 100%, and TLS, 100%, we have these numbers and the, the, the percentage here relative, relative to unique domains. Uh, for uh, top test email, we have uh, 8,000 uh, measurements up to now and uh, about 3,000 uh, uh, unique domains for, uh, for email. Uh, the, the Kenya top just uh, uh, 49. And these are our numbers for IPv6, DNSSEC, OTC marks, and the start TLS. Connect, uh, the, the, the test connect, uh, connection test, uh, we, we have up to now uh, 70,000 uh, measurements involving 4,000 uh, uh, AS tested. And this uh, 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 number for uh, the, the uh, DNSSEC uh, server tested and validated with DNSSEC and uh, DNSSEC server and user tested with IPv6. This is some, some numbers about the, the, the measurements per month. Uh, for this year, this first year of operation, for tests we have about 1.5 thousand uh, uh, tests per, per month. Per month. Uh, for sites, for for email about five hundred, and for connection uh, six thousand tests per month. The software was uh, recently de deployed, uh, uh, as I said. We are uh, disseminating the tool in uh, ISPs events and in specific sectors such as government and uh, academia. Uh, we, we had partnership with associations of internet pro providers in Brazil and academia, uh, which help to publicize the, the, the tool in their events. Uh, with the dissemination of the tool, it is already possible to observe some, some actors ad adopting uh, the good practice verified by, by the tool. Brazil has uh, continental dimensions, and it's a challenge to, to follow the, the evolution of the use of the, the standards. We are working to, to take measurements on controlled groups, uh, uh, such as government websites, uh, economy, and banks. Our, our uh, partnerships in Brazil, the main here, uh, uh, IFCS, uh, I have I, ISPs associations and the RNP is Academia. So, uh, uh, our, I'd like to thank to thank for Internet Standards and the entire uh, support team who are helping us to keep the the top up to date uh, following uh, best uh, security practices. This is our point of contact, uh, uh, and I. I, I I, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity for this presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gilberto. Um, these are some of the interesting use cases of the adoption of uh, standards. Um, one thing is that I appreciate uh, the GFCE for taking up this initiative. And uh, under the GFC, just a reminder is that this is under Working Group E, uh, which deals with uh, Internet Standards and Cybersecurity. Um, I'm happy to mention that uh, with us here we have Martin, who focuses his work on the Triple I project, and uh, it's after extending the knowledge and building capacity uh, on adoption of the standards. I'll not speak much about Martin, but let me give him the floor. Martin, please. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Daniel. This works even better. Uh, thank you and uh, welcome all in the room. Some of you may know me better as a uh, director of the, the ICANN board, which I am as well, but that's not a full-time job. I'm also very interested in, in helping the world in building capacity up and beyond ICANN's mission, and this is what GFCE is doing. Uh, the Triple I initiative within GFCE that I've been uh, honored to, 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 to set, set up and, uh, and lead uh, on behalf of GFCE is really aimed at improving justified trust in the use of the internet in your region, in your region. It requires collaboration on the ground uh, of multiple people. And, and in fact, Daniel was one of the people uh, who've been uh, instrumental in helping at two previous African Internet Summits to have such a workshop uh, where uh, mainly multipliers uh, from uh, the African Internet industry users, but also governments came together and, and were eager to learn from uh, the work that uh, has been done here. Uh, the platform internet.nl is really offering an opportunity and you can already use it today because it works in English. If, you work, if you're able to work in English, you can use it. Now, the instances that we heard from Australia and Brazil and also in Denmark, where they made a kind of local implementation using the code that Internet.nl has developed, which is freely available, as uh, Gerben, uh, the, the chairman of the platform, uh, said early on. If you implement that for yourself, you can link it to what is important to you in your region, who are the people to call if you want to improve something, and, and, and information like that. And you can, of course, add uh, languages that are uh, uh, prevalent. For instance, if we would have something like this in Africa, I would see it wouldn't be only in English, but also in French, and maybe other languages. In India, we're talking about English and Hindi, and in due time, maybe other uh, scripts. So this is the tool that already offers possibilities today and more tomorrow. Now, Gerben is chairman of a platform, which is not the software platform itself, but truly the collaboration of those people that together in the Netherlands, government, uh, tech suppliers, uh, use industry, uh, are sitting together to say, so what is important in the Netherlands? Where do we put our emphasis? Which other standards may we need to check in the future with this platform? Uh, and, and, and things like that. So if you're thinking of how this could mean something for you in your region, think also about how can you guide such an implementation of a local version? Uh, so that's the second step. And the third step is awareness raising. Um, I know in particular in Africa, and, and we've had that in the sessions that uh, we had at the African Internet Summit, the priority in Africa is not safety or security. It is getting online, right? And getting online is uh, a, a first prerequisite to be able to get in trouble. The problem is nowadays, as soon as you get online, you can get in trouble because people from all over the, the world will be able to attack you uh, confuse you or, or abuse you and uh, it's good to be prepared for that so to be aware from that from day one it comes with the connectivity the access to this wonderful world of good and bad so better be prepared so this is why it's so interesting and so relevant to to take this into account so the last the the, the, the last thing we're trying to do and and in india we're talking about how can we get that done already is to have a kind of awareness raising campaign that goes to the normal people. And uh, Bart was with us in a, a recent event also in India, where the Indians are also considering building their own instance. And what you see is that, uh, particularly when you come to a hall of fame, or good or bad, or uh, naming and shaming, it doesn't work as well in each culture as it works in the Dutch. You can call us for whatever we are, and we'll say, oh, <laughs> uh, in other cultures, sometimes that's a showstopper. So but it's just an example of one of the elements, what is important to take into account if you want to help in your region to make this progress. And again, I think uh, 
you can already start today using internet.nl. If you're really interested and you have the right contacts, uh, you can engage with your, 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 your technical partners, with, with, with your government, uh, with others, to start an initiative like this. Information on this is available from the GFC website. Um, uh, with the help of the Ministry of Economics as a main driver in the Netherlands, uh, we've gotten to this point, uh, but it's not only the Ministry of Economics anymore, uh, uh, and the few users they expanded. Same in your region, as Bart said, it's not the same group of stakeholders, but uh, small and medium businesses organization is one driving there. Maybe something different in your land, in your country. Um, the second good news is we also heard from uh, Bart, and, and uh, it was uh, confirmed by Brazil, it's not copy and paste. No, that's true. Yet the use of the code is getting easier over time because the Dutch also pay attention to making it usable. An example of that is it will be easier to, to add an extra language because the, 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 the software is now structured in a way that you can, in a way, uh, have the key uh, messages translated in any language you want. So, so th they're thinking of how to make it more usable as well, next to make it available on GitHub, and uh, uh, etc. So. My call to you is if you care about the internet in your region, if you think it makes sense to improve the justified trust, so not just trust, not blind trust, justified trust, because of good use of uh, uh, state-of-the-art standards, start today. And uh, if you really want to have GFC help you, reach out to GFC and uh, uh, there's all kind of material on the previous workshops, there is a handbook on these standards, why they matter. There is uh, uh, even a playbook for setting up events, if, if you're really interested. And uh, uh, the, the Dutch platform has always been very helpful in helping you in using the software as well, up and beyond GitHub itself. So uh, with that, I think I see some smiles. So I hope the smile is followed by action. You can start with putting in your own website. I'm at 85%, so uh, can't get 100% either. So I won't get, oh yeah. One thing they told me in India when they made this presentation, if you make 100%, send an email to info at internet.nl and you get a free t-shirt. Great, uh, those are kind of some of the opportunities and you might be wondering where is Africa involved in this? Um, I'll just give just a brief of the trends of how uh, these platforms have been working. I think around 2017, 2018, uh, we started the campaign to be able to engage uh, different stakeholders to start advocating about these standards. Uh, we, tr we got the code, we customized it, but somewhere, somehow, we got a few challenges. Uh, but at least right now, I would like to say that every other day the code is getting easier. Um, and. Uh, uh, through support from uh, the African Network Information Center, which is the regional registry, uh, WACREN, uh, Africa SAT, and some of the national SATs, they took up this initiative to start doing the campaign. And uh, in coming 2023, we are going to be uh, starting up an uh, initiative called uh, the Trusted Africa Internet uh, Initiative, which is aiming at promoting these standards. Uh, one thing that uh, to make it more clear is that uh, GFCE, is building a multi-stockholder community from all respective regions around the world. And this comprise of all entities, whether government or civil society, because we all need one trusted internet ecosystem. And it's not only the role of only governments, but it's also the role of you. How can you be able to influence? We have seen from the statistics uh, that have been shared, um, we have lots of domains running on the website. We have lots of websites. Uh, on, but how many of them are following these standards? How many web hosts are advocating for these standards? And I think that is something. Let me just uh, give uh, Gaben uh, to say something. Gaben? Thank you, uh, Daniel. Um, thanks for uh, uh, hosting this event. Um, and I want to thank Martin, uh, Bart, and Sil Gilberto for all the nice words mentioned about internet.nl 
Um, but we never intended to have internet.nl be more or less the standard for the rest of the world. We just wanted to share our experience and we are more than willing to continue to do that. Uh, let me share with you a few things that, that resulted from all of this work in the Netherlands. We have seen over the, the last eight years an enormous take up of the percentage of websites and email servers and even connections that have improved uh, just by the fact that people uh, were shown bad results and uh, sometimes in comparison with others, the naming and shaming, also that they were not doing as well as their neighbor. And therefore they wanted to improve. Uh, that, that perhaps works only in the Dutch context. We do realize that, but we have seen that it can be a feature if you have a list of, for example, government domains that are showing in order of success and where uh, the, the organizations with a, a lower result really want to, to make sure that it, it, it gets better and better. At least in the Netherlands, it worked. And we are really happy to see that around the world, um, others are uh, dealing with the same issue and taking up uh, good initiatives to make all of this work. But it's only limited to um, a few countries. Uh, there is some uh, work going on in the European uh, community as well, uh, where they uh, have measured all uh, EU countries uh, to a certain extent, uh, making use of internet.nl code and of their own code developed by the Joint Research Center. But nonetheless, there is a long road uh, to go. And what we would like to do is uh, call upon um, United Nations to uh, help accelerate the global uptake of, of all of these relevant standards. Uh, for example, by including their promotion in the Global Digital Compact and uh, make sure that they support others, other countries in setting up test websites and initiatives similar to that um, uh, we have taken up and Brazil Australia, Denmark, and many other countries have taken up as well. So I think there is still work to do. And I'm really um, wondering if there are questions from the audience online or um, at the meeting of the IGF uh, to, to learn about your ideas on how we can promote these open standards. Daniel, back to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there are some questions in the audience. I'll start right from my extreme left, then we shall go to my right. Oh, so. Am I extreme left? Oh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Mainly proceed. Uh, so the, the, I like the honesty of the presentation because the presentation itself already uh, demonstrated that there are no standards because Australia is just ignoring the NSSEC, for example, which is strange because that's part of a standard. So if, if you allow organizations to create their own standards, what's the standard in the end? And um, I was checking the, the Australian Czech website for uh, on, on the internet NL and they scored 95%, uh, not even 100%. So, so uh, I mean, it's not a standard yet. So there has to be work done there. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing, but it's a more political thing, is like um, it doesn't say anything about like this email provider is reading your email for, well, uh, tracking or, or maybe uh, advertisement purposes. Uh, could that also be included at some point, maybe? Thanks. Uh, thank you. I suggest that. Uh uh, we take uh, the questions at once and then we can answer them. Also, a reminder that please introduce yourself, and then you can be able to speak. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Daniel. And my name is Mark Carvel. I'm a special advisor for an IGF dynamic coalition called IS3C, Internet Standards uh, for Security and Safety. So, this dynamic coalition is looking very much at this terrain of deployment of security-related standards. And uh, our networking session for the Dynamic Coalition, ISVC, is taking place in this room straight after this session. 
So uh, we very much hope that uh, participants in this uh, session that uh, internet.nl and uh, the Triple I initiative will want to join us and hear about the progress that we are making in the Dynamic Coalition in looking at uh, the take-up of standards and in particular the drivers for deployment of standards. And indeed, this is uh, an area where we hope to also to contribute to the global digital compact, as, as Gerben was, was describing. So um, we're, we're starting at uh, 10.45 local time here. So please, I hope you will join us and, and uh, uh, engage, engage with us and uh, hopefully contribute to our work on this important issue of deployment of, of key standards and help us with our working groups and our research projects in, on these issues. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, okay. My name is Peter King for the record. I'm from Liberia. Basically, I would like to commend this particular session for the level of um, work input by the, the internet.nl. And I believe that from an African perspective, we also need to look at this as a benchmark, not, not to just replicate, but then to look at how we can fit it into the African context. But this is a good standard in terms of what I see with the level of uh, literature in terms of uh, methodology. What I would like to say as well is because of the name of the sake of quality, because quality is key in terms of the quality standards. I believe that we should, we as in Africa, we can look at this as a measure because the proliferation of more IP addresses and a lot of the uh, rollout of more I mean, domains and the rest, it becomes an issue of standards. So I think this is just a comment, and I believe that this is in the right direction to help to I mean, harmonize the level of standards that can be used in any part of the world. Thank you. I think the last one. Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Savio. I'm part of the tef technical community, and I'm here by the uh, Brazilian Youth uh, Program uh, provided by the uh, uh, Brazilian Steering Internet Steering uh, Committee. And well, uh, first of all, I would like to congr congratulate. Uh, you all uh, by your initiative uh, and, in, and in the case of all these uh, standards uh, we have uh, uh, a good situation we have uh, where we have uh, the protocols implemented but we also have uh, the situation of new protocols being developed that uh, can solve many other problems and we still don't have uh, implementation of these protocols <laughs> uh, and we also can't deploy them if we don't have implementation. So this this is some something else that we can maybe discuss, discuss later, but I think that we should put some light on it uh, in a further moment. And still in this point of, of, the, of the context of these presentations, uh, I would like to know what come next. Uh, I mean, these are good initiatives, uh, capacity building, uh, I can see a really great effort in the Brazilian community that I know well, uh, but I it's still not been en enough. So I would like to know what comes next. How can we improve the adoption of these uh, standards, mostly in the context of, of uh, ISPs? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Let me uh, close that queue for questions. Let me give Martin the report to, to give one answer. Okay, thank you, thank you for, for all the questions and uh, uh, it's really, uh, for to, to start with the last question, this is why it starts here and it starts here every moment. It starts with people, any of such initiatives. Uh, what you said about uh, what are the standards? Well, basically the standards that are currently uh, on the list on the internet.nl website, they're all uh, generally agreed standards by, by, by the standard bodies. Uh, uh, and where the priorities are, and it, as, as Bart said, it's different in Australia than in, in the Netherlands, for instance, uh, is also where uh, the attention is. And uh, what happened in Australia a couple of years ago is that there was uh, uh, a compromise of, of the use of email from, from parliamentarians that led to some parliamentarian debate and, and public unrest about generated by, by abuse, which generally could have been prevented by the use of DKIM and DMARC. So DKIM DMARC is higher on the attention list there. 
in the Netherlands, DNSSEC is pretty high because a couple of years ago, for about half a year, banks had a hard time to, to get reached because of uh, DDoS attacks and things like that, which led to uh, an emphasis on solutions there, uh, support from uh, Dutch partners to, to, to get DNSSEC uh, really accelerated. For instance, .nl was offering their registrars who sell the domains to the people uh, a discount if they would implement DNSSEC. So, so this is why it's uh, so important to talk together. Now, I, I must say, uh, it's good that Australia also had DNSSEC on its Pfizer, because I think in the end, uh, we can wait until the Titanic sinks and then start focusing on the standards that would have helped prevent that. But we can also start implementing these uh, standards that help for the integrity of the routing so that you get to the right address, of the integrity of the message that people cannot tamper with the message. All these kind of things are uh, affected by these standards. And for more technical explanation, please go to the, the either internet.nl site or the GFCE handbook and, and you'll find more information. So, so the, I think that that is, that is key. Uh, standards are also a living thing, so Mark, thank Mark. and. Uh, uh, we got another person here working on it, Wout, uh, also part of that uh, dynamic coalition. Standards are an evolving thing. It's, it's almost like a, a weapon run, right? Uh, we, we, we try to deal with the vulnerabilities because when the internet was built, it wasn't built to be safe. It was built to be used. And now it's used for things that the original builders never foresaw they would be used for. So it's becoming more critical on certain aspects, and that's why we see standards emerging that, in a way, harden the internet, uh, ensure that you can have more justified trust in it. So that's why uh, I think that's a very good call, and for those who have time and no other sessions, please stay. Last thing I wanted to say is uh, really relating to the statistics. I mean, what Brazil has done with these statistics, uh, similar things have happened in the Netherlands. It wasn't. Uh, 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 demonstrated that much by Gerben, but uh, the fact that you can use this uh, also API to have a check of all government websites, all websites such as sets, or, or, or just a sample, a, a basket of websites in a country to see how the, the uptake of these uh, standards is uh, improving over time. Measurement one, measurement two, measurement three is an excellent way to see where the vulnerabilities are and where the attention is. Because in the end, standard implementation isn't a one place point, but it's along a value chain. So if you as an end user are very interested to have all these protections, you then need to find a provider who can offer that too, an ISP that offers that too. So that, that, that's, that's the, the last thing. So also consider the statistics. Yeah, and thank you. As we are coming towards the end of this, I'm just requesting that the next uh, three will be able to make remarks within one minute. So we have Wout, and uh, then we shall be able to hear from uh, from Gaben. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, my name is Wout Natris, and I'm the coordinator of the Dynamic Coalition Internet Standards, Security, and Safety. Um, what I would like to point out is that we, as a coalition, look at the drivers for implementation as Mark Covell already mentioned, but we're talking about standards that make the internet work, and they're insecure, and these newer standards l deliver the security once deployed. And in our view, that if the big users on the internet, and specifically governments and large corporations, would start demanding these standards to be built into the products, whether it's on IoT, whether it's on email, whether it's on security of software, if they demand it, then it's a procurement process, and the ones that can't provide it won't get the assignment. So that would be a tremendous driver for industry to start deploying these standards. And that is what we are sort of promoting from different angles. So if you want to hear more, please join this session, and tomorrow at 16.15 in the large briefing room, we'll be presenting our first report. Thank you. Thank you. Gaben? Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you all. Uh, first, uh, first of all, I want to thank the audience uh, for the questions. And I will get back to one specific uh, small topic. And I would like uh, to thank the contributors for showing 
how important uh, modern internet standards are in uh, keeping our internet open, free and secure, accessible to uh, everyone. And those open standards come from an international community uh, prepared by the Internet Engineering Task Force and well described and designed. But um, the first question was a little bit about ethics. Uh, what, what are email service providers, for example, doing with our email? That kind of question is typical for the kind of dialogue and discussion we have in our Internet Standards platform. So don't forget, if you have something like Internet.nl, that is a great step towards checking the security of your own Internet and email. But you also need an audience or a group of people, a group of experts willing to discuss the way forward, what uh, standards to include, what is the ethical aspects of those standards, who are benefiting from it, and can it be used in a, in a perhaps wrong, in a bad way as well. And if we see that kind of thing, we really are not advising to, to use that kind of, kind of standard. So once again, from our side, from internet.nl, thank you uh, for uh, your attention. And I hope that we can keep the internet open, free and secure. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Gabin. Just uh, as I'm putting forward some closing remarks, uh, the question about uh, if Africa. Uh, kindly, for those who are from Africa, watch out the space for the Trusted Africa Internet Initiative that will be coming up in 2023. Uh, just watch out for that, and I encourage you to participate because it is going to take up a full multi-stakeholder approach involving all the different regional distributions, uh, regional distribution of all the regions within Africa. Uh, and secondly, what comes next after this? Still, uh, we are going to continue the mission of advocacy, capacity building, and calling in for collaboration to be able to make uh, the internet standards applicable globally. With that, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the technical team, and thank you for all participating. For any questions, kindly send an email to contact at the gfce.org. Thank you.